Well, you know, there is speculation, and it may be a little more than spec speculation now, that when that infants are synesthetes, and synesthesia is simply a crossing of two senses, um, almost like it's like a translation of one sense into another. Famous examples are people who see numbers as colors. Every number has a distinct color. Um, synesthetes don't agree on which color, but when they, seven, for example, for some people is always green. Um, I do not have that kind of synesthesia, um, but in a way, I think many of us that have that when we read, you know, when I read a book, I'm always seeing the people. I'm making mental images to accompany it so that I'm translating um, you know, the, the sight of those little, little, you know, characters on the page into visual images that I can take with me and keep. Um, I was rather amused to uh, read, you know, during my research for this book about something called mirror touch synesthesia and saying to myself, well, I, I have that. And so that is when people look at someone, something is happening to another person. Say you look at someone being slapped on the arm and then the, the mirror touch synesthete has a sensation in the arm. Not the same as being slapped, at least not in my case at all, but there is a kind of mirroring experience so that the visual looking becomes the tactile impression in the body. Um, and uh, I think you see, again, going back to behaviorism and the talk of this, before brain scans and before recent research into the brain, um, people were very reluctant to do s any studies about synesthesia because it just seemed so wacky. Um, <laughs> and so that's what happens. Once researchers have some kind of hypothesis, um, about neural networks in the brain, and maybe that infants are all synesthetes, and that these, as the brain develops, as its plasticity continues, um, most people lose that crossing over of, from one sense to the other. Um, and some people don't. They retain it. <music>